we are here in, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I have in front of me John Valdez, a famous director of several films, including the Longoria Affair. What are some of the other ones, John? Uh, uh, well, we have a six-hour series that's going to air uh, in the fall of 2013 called Latino Americans. It's a history of Latinos in the United States. I'm producing two hours of that six-hour series. Wow. Uh, last year, uh, the Longoria Affair aired on public television. Uh, was nominated for an Emmy. Uh, before that, we did a four-hour series called Latin Music USA. Um, I directed the third hour, which was a history of Mexican American music, uh, and I could keep going, but uh, I'm sure you'd get bored. <laughs> I, would, I would never be bored. So tell me, how did you get into film? Uh, I went to uh, NYU Film School, New York University. And that's a three-year, four-year college? It's a four-year program. I went about a year, year and a half. And so did you take a, a particular angle in film? We were talking earlier. Oh, well, uh, you know, I wanted to make uh, feature films originally. But I found out when I got to film school that uh, when, when you do a feature film, right, you need actors, right? And there's this thing called continuity, right? Uh, you know, people's hair is a certain length, their facial hair, right? And so what you need to do is you kind of need to more or less shoot the entire film in a short period of time because you have everybody together and you want to keep continuity. If you need to shoot something, the scenes have to match and everything. And so you kind of need to shoot the whole thing in a short period of time and that's very expensive right so the only way that I could figure out how to make films is if I could work a little bit maybe shoot for a day work 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 save up money shoot for a day work 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 save money shoot for a day and I couldn't do a dramatic film that way or I'd have to radically rethink uh, you know, non-fiction nar or, or fiction narrative. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll do a documentary because a documentary, in some ways, it may be a virtue if it takes place over a longer time than wise. And so that's what I did. It was really an economic choice because I was poor. <laughs> Well, this was in Pueblo, Colorado, for the 4th of July weekend, to interview the Valenzuela Brothers, who are two Vietnam veterans in deportation. Tell me why you're marching today. Bring all the soldiers back. Back from where? From deportation. I don't know, we don't leave no soldier behind. What do you mean? And so what was your first documentary? It was called Passing It On. It was about a former leader of the Black Panther Party uh, who was falsely in prison, spent 19 years uh, in prison in upstate New York, eight of those in solitary confinement, uh, framed by the FBI's counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO. And, uh, and in the middle of us filming, uh, he got released because of prosecutorial misconduct uh, in his case. And so the film was really about his journey as a young man going up in the South Bronx, why he joined the Panthers, how he landed in prison, and uh, how he fought to get his own freedom, and then what he did once he got out of prison. So how were you able to convince a member of the Black Panthers to, to work with you? On you know, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, I mean, part of it was he was in prison, so. <laughs> so there's a story to be told. You know, you know, but, uh, and, but I think the, 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 the bigger thing is, or this is just my belief, and, you know, I, mean, I could be wrong or whatever, but I think um, if, you're, if your aim is true, if you're, if you're honest and you're sincere um, in what you're wanting to do, and if you're wanting to uh, use uh, film, uh, to make a difference in people's lives, to bring out some kind of injustice, to point out some kind of inequity, to make the world a better place, and you're willing to work hard in that endeavor, um, I think, you know, I think people respond to that, and I think they get it, and I think you will find allies when you thought you had none, and I think you will find uh, collaborators when you thought you were alone, and I think, um, you know, sometimes uh, things can really work out if you're if you're if you're if you're true to your vision and if you're true to uh, to what you really want to say and if it's something if you're trying to say something important that resonates with other people. Wow. 
now, how much do you rely on storyboard and how much do you rely on just shoot from the hip? Well, kind of neither. I, I rely on, um, you have to, when you start, I think you have to have a narrative in mind, a narrative arc. What's going to be the beginning, the middle, and the end? Where's the audience going to go? And then you break it down from there, and, and I think in terms of sequences, okay, a sequence. And each sequence is going to be a building block in that narrative, in bringing you through that story. And so you try to think of sequences. What is this sequence going to stay, say? How is this sequence going to push the narrative forward? And so that's the way, it, you know, the way I, I, I think about it. So when we go out and shoot, I think, okay, well, what sequence are we going to shoot? And what's going to be the function in the broader narrative? Oh. You um, obviously tackle some difficult topics. What would you consider to be your most emotional moment in these 18 years of filmmaking? <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, that's hard to say. I think um, I think what we you know obviously I think my first film is very special because that's my first film. I was a student at the time. Um, I also think that whatever you're working on now better be uh, in your mind your best film. Otherwise you're you're in the wrong business. You know what I mean? I mean that should be the thing that you think is going to be the most moving, most intense, most illuminating, uh, the most heartfelt. And uh, so, uh, you know, I would say uh, this film. And which, what, what is going to be this film? Uh, American Exile. And it's the story of, uh, of, of men from various wars who served their country, uh, combat veterans, uh, wounded in battle. Um, and then when they return, uh, and everyone's story is a little different, but uh, but they find that uh, that they're being exiled from the United States, the country. Deported. Well, I'm not sure. I think uh, to deport somebody, that person has to be from another place, right? Um, you're returning them, you're porting them back to the place that they originally ported from, deporting. Right, and um, you have kids and grandkids, and you know, and a wife and a home and, and, a, and a business, and uh, you've built a, a, a life here, and you're connected to the land, and you're collect, and you're you're connected to this society uh, uh, to, to send you to a country that you haven't really been to since you know, since you were since you were a little kid. Is uh, it just doesn't make sense. In some cases, for example, Vietnamese. Immigrants who are sent back to Vietnam and they can't even speak Vietnamese. It, it just really blows me I think, I think it raises a question of, you know, what is an American? What do we mean when we say that? Um, and what is the meaning of sacrifice? What is the meaning of service? What is the meaning of patriotism? You know, what do those things mean exactly? Um, and I think, I, and I think that's what this film is about. What, what, what does it mean to be an American? You know, can, can we really answer that? Um, and maybe, maybe it's something we need to, as a nation, uh, reflect upon a little bit more deeply and uh, do a little soul searching. Because when you, when, when you take combat veterans who have saved Americans' lives and send them to a foreign country in their autumn years with no health care, uh, and you, you, you know, you send them to a foreign place, uh, it's pretty, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's horrible. Can you imagine something worse than being exiled out of your homeland and being separated from everything you know? And, uh, you know it's, uh, it's, it's pretty harsh. Well, I can barely wait for the movie. Yeah, if no. uh, people want to follow you, do you have a web page or... Uh, or some way they can uh, watch what you're doing? Well, we have a long way to go before the film is done, but, uh, but you can just Google my name, uh, John J. Valadez Filmmaker, and uh, there will be endless pages. <laughs> Many pages, huh? <laughs> endless pages. You can go to the longodiafair.com. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm easy to find. It's not, I'm, I'm not an elusive thing. <laughs>
John, I really appreciate the interview, and uh, I really admire what you do for the community, and, and I can barely wait for this movie to come out. Well, cool. Thank you, man. You bet. Thank you.